Good day, everyone. Well, <laughs> these uh, markets just get more and more interesting. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, time to uh, be a participant and or an observer if you choose to be on the sidelines, which is understandable um, given uh, this type of uh, riptide action. Um, past the, uh, the election results, uh, naturally we've seen a huge rotation into sectors that um, institutions believe will benefit from a, a Trump administration. Uh, such as banks and biotechs, healthcare, uh, infrastructure stocks, and whatnot. Um, and we've seen that uh, a number of uh, names, uh, a number of these being smaller cap names, say with market caps under you know, two to three billion, um, like SAIC, uh, that's a commercial services company, um, or PRI, that's, a, that's an insurance company, which is like the banks, they're gonna, be, they're gonna benefit from uh, uh, financial fr friendly uh, policies. Um, there's also a GVA, which is uh, in construction, uh, which naturally benefits from infra infrastructure. Um, CACI, uh, that's a tech services company, so that's, you know, not all companies are in those groups. Some of these, some of these are outside, like LOPE, that's an education company. And these are companies that just shot up over the last few days. Um, uh, we have HQY, that's a health care company, so naturally that's been strong. And then things like WOR, which is in construction, it's a metal fabrication company. So that benefits from infrastructure. Uh, so at any rate, as uh, the yield curve, um, you know, we've seen it steepen. And uh, it is suggestive, suggestive of a, a December rate hike. The last I checked a few days ago, uh, the uh, Futures, I think, we're still pricing in about a 68% chance. Uh, it's better than two thirds, um, and that the uh, economy um, ultimately, uh, I guess, will you know, the, it, or the market is perhaps saying that uh, it may benefit from an all Republican, no gridlock government. Um, so, consequently, precious metals have been selling off. Gold, GLD, for instance, is, is uh, well broken below uh, its uh, its support. Um, and uh, but that said, uh, the short side over the last few days has been nicely profitable. Uh, this has been a riptide market, so um, you know we've seen many big cap names come under fire, and that's partly due to uh, concerns about Trump's antitrust attitude towards companies such, such as Amazon, um, and which he actually mentioned as a company he wants to investigate. Um, but it's also because you know much of, much of this institutional capital, which is parked in these super caps like Facebook and uh, Amazon and Google, um, some of it's rotating out into the uh, these above mentioned sectors. Um, and uh, as far as uh, the short side, uh, Tesla, which we profiled in a short sale report, that remains in a downtrend. Um, it can barely muster any meaningful rally, uh, as you can see, and it's far weaker than the general market. Um, so, on a relative strength basis, this thing's in the, in the toilet. Um, and if you're, uh, uh, well, I'll let you know, Gil say some words about uh, Tesla and any other shorting opportunities because there have been. Um, so, uh, so I will. Uh, well, that's, go that's ahead. Kind of been that's been where the money's been made the last few days. I mean, if you if you anticipated a Trump rally and you bought infrastructure stocks or biotechs or anything that would be perceived like financials to proceed to benefit from Trump policies and you got a nice move out of these things but I, I'm wondering like you, you talk about the GVA you know is I guess it's breaking out this thing's been basing breaking out for a while maybe you sell them here if you if you owned them or short them because uh, I don't on a, on a company by company basis I, I'm not sure how clear it is that these are all going to be massive beneficiaries you know the, the other thing is where does the money come from and uh, are we going to have a big booming economy? Uh, I, I think the action of the market doesn't really give you a clear message and maybe arguing for uh, weakening the way some of these big big stock NASDAQ names have been pummeled. But as money comes out of those, they come into uh, names like Caterpillar. But, you know, this almost could become a short in here. It's it's sort of pod-like, so I'd keep an eye on that. I'm not... I've been making a lot of money short myself, so I just go by what's what my sense of the market is based on the feedback that I'm getting, and, and I've had a couple of you know ra random long ideas that have worked. Like you get this pocket pivot and and impinge right here, and then it pulls in, and then 
on the day after the election, uh, it opened up right at the 10 day line and, and good for a 11% pop on the day. And that's a kind of kind of a nice trade. Another one I messed around with and I sold it too soon because I sold it on the first day. But this NTNX pops off the lows and then after the election uh, continues higher and then we're seeing it pull back yesterday and trying to stabilize today. They came out with earnings at the end of the uh, month. But some of these IPOs might be interesting to keep an eye on if the market continues, continues rallying. But I have a macro theory, which, you know, you have yesterday the Dow making an all-time high. So it reminds me a little bit of the uh, NDX making an all-time high back in October. So it's a narrow index, few few names, and of course that immediately led to a nine-day decline. Okay, now we have the Dow has broken out to new highs, all-time highs. It's being trumpeted all over the media, and uh, people got to rush in and buy this market because it's a wonderful world now that Donald Trump is going to be president. I, I personally, I think the whole uh, movement around all the news surrounding the election, around the Deutsche Bank, around all, all sorts of things that have been going on recently may be simply setting up uh, what has really been a long distributive process and then you get one breakout and everything looks wonderful. Of course the breakout isn't really happening in the S&P but they make it, you know, the headline uh, index, the Dow looks really good and so everybody comes rushing in and, and the big money just sells to them. And you have to wonder when you see names like Amazon and Google, which to me this has been a short, okay? You had a chance to short it, you had the break here, that's a late stage failure on the weekly chart. I think we talked about this last week. Uh, and so you'd be shorting into rallies. So, you know, you could could have hit it up in here if you're bold enough to do so and, and it's broken to lower lows. Now you're kind of plumbing this low over here on the left side. See, so you see how that triggers a little bit of a rally, but these things are they're not even getting much in the way of dead cat bounces. So I'm not uh, convinced that this market's out of the woods. You know, yesterday the Dow was up big, but they're pummeling these big stock NASDAQ names, which to me are the backbone of the economy. You know, not granite construction or whatever, some little dink uh, uh, cement company. So a lot of those gap ups I might look at as being shortable. Now, in terms of the Dodd-Frank being positive for the financials, it's actually... It's less positive, uh, or at least Trump's approach towards getting rid of Dodd-Frank, it's, it's less positive for bigger financials and more positive for smaller financials. So you have the biotechs and the little financials that populate the Russell 2000, taking the Russell 2000 up, and that looks really, you know, exciting. So here's the, the rut. So it's actually breaking out to a new high today. Now, if you want to take a contrarian trade, uh, actually, let's look at the IWM because it may have reversed. That's 20. Yeah. So if you look at the IWM or the TWM, you could go long the TWM possibly here looking for a reversal. What's your risk if it continues a little bit higher, I suppose? But uh, it looks looks suspect. So somebody's asking NVDA BGU. Um, my, my thing here would be you shouldn't have to ask us. If you know what a Bible gap up is, you could have hit it this morning on the long side. You'd be up 5%. Uh, this one's had a long run, so the question is whether this will sustain or if it'll reverse. So I wouldn't buy it up here, but if you bought it this morning, you're getting a nice trade out of it. But for the most part, I've viewed, viewed the long side. You know, I bought, I bought heavily into uh, the drop on Wednesday morning, and that was bizarre because the, the Dow futures were down 900 points, almost 900 points overnight. I mean, that was worse than the Brexit sell-off. The next morning, we open up, and we're roughly – flattish and we go down about 80 on the Dow. So what happened to those 800 and something points uh, on the futures overnight just kind of disappeared. So that almost had a manipulated feel to it. So, you know, I wonder if, if forget about, you know, the, the election and whether one candidate is good for the market or not. The reality seems to be that it's all beyond who the president is at this point. So the whole world is leveraged up to the hilt. If Trump's policies are viewed as negative for China, which is highly leveraged, then that could come crashing down. And I think, didn't they get hit last night, Dr. K, on, in China? Um, uh, not in a major way. I, I saw the Hang Sen getting tagged. But I don't know how they closed, because I didn't stay up all night, obviously. I'll tell you in a second, actually. Okay. Um, hold on. Oh, where did, that's just when you needed it. It, uh, it just <laughs> shut off. <laughs> that always, okay, here we go. Um, uh, let's see. Let me check some Asia. Okay, we've got uh, yeah. The Hang Seng was off, well, it was off. Here we go 1. down 16. All the all the other Asian markets were about flat to up. Uh huh. Um, but the Hang Seng was down 1.3 percent. Nothing major. 
Okay. Oh, I, I also wanted to mention, um, uh, you, you know, when you mentioned GVA and, and I mentioned those other stocks, I wanted to be clear to our listeners uh, that uh, that those stocks are no means any kind of buy recommendation. It's just illustrative of Thanks how money clarifying. has moved has moved into those particular. You know, those are a small example of the many names money has moved into that are benefiting from the per perceived view that the, the Trump policies will and, and you know what be, I think it's, kind. I think it's a knee-jerk reaction that will end up failing that's what I think so we'll see if my predictions correct I don't know my my crystal ball though like I was telling you earlier Dr. King, it's sort of it's the batteries have gone dead and it's grown a beard which is really bizarre for a crystal ball but uh, that's what my crystal ball says. But, you know, yesterday, and I was telling you this yesterday, we had a, everybody, we had a long discussion this morning before the webinar about the whole thing, early this morning. Because the way I was looking at the market yesterday, the, the Dow movement looked suspect. And the meanwhile, they're just tagging the NASDAQ names. So all of that to me looks suspicious. And, and you, when, when you combine it with the NDX making a new high in October, and then you have the Russell, which got everybody thinking that, oh, it's a risk on market. But it's all financials. You know, little financials are going bonkers and, and little biotechs are going bonkers. So are those really fundamentally based moves that, that uh, will establish thematic trends? I don't know. I, I'm skeptical of it. So, they, so this gets everybody excited. So there's so much, I think, here that can be manipulated uh, for the purpose of distributing into dumb money buying. That's, that's what I, I'm, I'm wary of here. And that's why I'm not really a big long side player here, and I've been making a pile of money on the short side. So the market tells me whether it's bullish or bearish based on where I'm making money, not, not on what the indexes are doing or what the media is saying about the Dow being up at an all-time high. and They got the trumpets playing, and you know, it's a big freaking party. But, uh, and, that, that, and that's why essentially the, you know, the, there's, there's no real uh, strong case can be made in either direction um, as to reflective of today's report. No, I, I mean, think we're talking it can be made some, for the short well, side because that's what's been wildly profitable. And if you well, got the story yesterday, end the story. On a day-to-day -day, day -day basis in terms of making money, and that's what it's all about, the short yeah. side has afforded some good opportunities. But, of course, the, 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 the reports that we write are, are not just that narrow. They're a little more broad. And so, basically, if someone wants to get a, you know, a better sense of well, what's going on and why is all this rotation going on and is it bullish or bearish and how bullish it is, is it that the Russell's up this much? Yeah, it's risk on, but that doesn't mean well, that we're all of a sudden I'm in a bullish environment. I'm going to miss it. It's colored. It's colored. It's a, you want to lose your ass get along this market right here, right now, if you want to lose your ass, because I think the danger here is a, a massive break to the downside. Something's not, I think it's something pretty, doesn't I think, smell right. I think it's premature to get long right now, um, and if anyone did buy into those uh, favored sectors and are sitting on profits, I, I, you know, we've advocated taking profits when you have them. Yeah. And I think that would uh, yeah, suit so for those. Yeah, so you would profits already, right? Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You book your profits and uh, and then you know and and be be very cautious because this has been a very I think one of the toughest environments since July, um, where the market just isn't really doing much of anything and the stocks that are moving aren't moving very much so you know your profit margins essentially are squeezed um, and fortunately you know those kinds of periods you know, we saw it in the S&P uh, it's never ever in its history um, since 19 I think it's started as its in current form in 1957 59 1959 it's never had such a narrow band uh, of really it's like a patient on the operating table and it's you know its heart rate starts to go flatline but we know that that can't happen forever and I th and I think you know with a changeover in, in uh, administration um, I think we're now going to see uh, more volatility um, or at least more direction but we just don't I don't think there's enough information to go on right now to say yeah we're now going to, into a bull or a bear market. We just have to, you know, be zen about it, and want, you know, as we always tell members, wait, uh, wait for the data, and then uh, make your decisions. Yeah, and I would say if you wanted, if you really wanted to get long this market, the time to do it was uh, Wednesday morning when it opened down. So, and but a lot of those things were just good for trade. So, I think the market's telling me it wants to go lower. So that's that's where I'm leaning at right now. So, and you know, I got names like shorting names like Facebook. That thing's down. Two, two bucks sitting at the 20-day moving average. Gave you two chances to buy it because you had an undercut. And then notice yesterday on the 620, um, this is almost somewhat textbook. Let's see if I can find the 620 chart. Yeah, there it is. 
But if we look at Facebook yesterday, you had this break at the beginning. Look at that. Just boom, boom, boom. And you get a MACD stretch and then the cross. So you can take a profit and cover and then let it run and then see if you get a sell signal later on. But overnight, nothing happening. And this morning, you had a sell signal up here uh, right just before the opening, right around the opening. So now, And it's heading lower. I think it's heading below the... Uh, 200 day from here but notice how it undercuts some of these lows undercuts the 200 day line and then pops like that so uh, that this is a late stage fail base and uh, at this point now you got the underside of this uh, base here is uh, overhead resistance so that seems to happen that you kind of got a, some in here tried to rally a little bit above the high of the gap down day which I think is 123.38 and uh, it actually did it for one day, but notice how that was a little wedging rally, and now you're rolling over. Probably going to go through the 200-day line and head lower. Now, where you go from there, let's take a look. Let's clean everything up here. Everybody see my screen okay? I don't, I don't think I had it up right away. I don't know when it came up, but in any case, you can see this is a pretty good break, and you're at the 200-day line. Now, the 200-day line for, in this case, the 40-week line on the uh, weekly chart has been an important line for Facebook all the way up. So this is a critical juncture here. If it breaks, and, and I think if we go into a full-on correction, it probably will. But it could sputter along the line for a little bit before going lower. So my take would be to try and short it on any little bounces and then knock it down. I'm actually not short it now because it's sitting right at the 200-day. I'm probably going to guess uh, that by the end of the day, I'm going to wish I just held that because it may just go straight down. But I think uh, things are looking... grim for Facebook. Somebody's saying something here. I want to just, now that we are at the intersection of Nirvana and Utopia Boulevard, it seems once you keep an eye on contrarian play like GLD and SLW for climactic selling. You know, interesting you brought that up, Mike, because I was thinking that because that's kind of how gold is. You know, it's, it's a contrarian thing and now it's looking like crap. So it's breaking down. Everyone wants to go short the thing. It, it reversed on uh, Wednesday morning after a big overnight rally, I think it was up like 54 or 60 bucks, something like that. Um, and I don't think the situation has changed in terms of uh, devaluing currencies. So uh, will you cover FB at 200? Yeah, that's what I, I do. Um, so I catch these breaks, you know, and cover it even today. So yesterday's rally got up to one, one, two, one or something like that. So shortable there. And then it comes down this morning and it's at the 200 day. But now, now I'm kind of looking at this thing like, okay, Here's where we are right now. It should probably rally. It's, it looks like it might. And so if you turn to the upside, I want to see how that plays out. On the other hand, it could just keep going lower. So I think the selling is going to get worse. We're down 55 on the Dow. NASDAQ's down 20. And the NASDAQ already got hammered yesterday while the Dow was up. And all the guys, Stuart Barney over on Fox was all excited. And congratulating some guy that said you wanted to buy the dip, which you did want to buy the dip on Tuesday morning, but it turned into a quick trade. So... <laughs> Take the money and run. Because that's what this market is all about. There's no, no, there hasn't been any real trend. But when I think about it, and I was talking earlier about this whole distribution process, you know, institutions have built up big positions. And Dr. K even mentioned that point in terms of the big NASDAQ stocks. These big institutions have been in these stocks for a long time. And now they're starting to exit. And for all you know, all of the action, the breakout in Facebook, after earnings, all the wonderful stuff, that was all just something the institutions were steadily selling into. And so you'd have this alibi selling. So when the market topped back in, uh, let's go to, uh, what happened to my, <clears throat> so when we topped out back in uh, in October, late October, that, that occurred because the FBI had reopened its investigation against Hillary Clinton. Oh my God, that's a terrible thing. The market comes off for nine days. Then you get the uh, alibi, uh, the alibi selling then gets its excuse to pop. And, and that is that the obvious answer is that the, uh, an Obama-appointed uh, FBI director, or whatever he's called, uh, isn't going to prosecute or announce prosecution of Hillary Clinton the day before the election. So obviously he says, oh, no, it's cool. Everything's fine. No, no problem. She, same, same status. Market jacks, okay? And so there's your al you have your alibi selling. So institutions hit it, hit it, hit it. But they know they they've got a lot of stock to sell if they're getting out of the market on the long term basis. So they ha have to use these uh, news alibis that are kind of lame because they also set up the potential for a reaction rally once the news is deemed to be uh, over with and not really a factor. So if you think about it, really Hillary Clinton. Uh, 
the investigation being reopened by the FBI, does that does that really mean anything? But for the market, okay, they start selling and they're distributing stock and getting the hell out of the way. And we saw breakdowns in names like Amazon, and I think Facebook. Did Facebook start around then? More more towards the end end of that one. Um, and so then they and, and they know that you're going to get a, the alibi for their selling is going to be reversed because they know the reason for the selling that was given by the media is kind of bogus anyways. And so you get the pop, and then they sell into that again. And you've had this several times. I think this was the Deutsche Bank one. One of these sell-offs in here was because of Deu the Deutsche Bank thing in September. But then immediately, you know, the realization that, oh, if Deutsche Bank's going under, the ECB will just come in and print a bunch of money and everything will be fine. So they turn it around. And, and they do this over and over again, and this is what I've been seeing. And in my mind, this speaks to systematic distribution based on the concept of alibi selling. Does everybody understand that? You understand what I'm getting? And this is something that Bill O'Neill explained to me in detail back when I ran money for him. So, um, anyways. So the market's now down 64 on the Dow. NASDAQ isn't down as much, but my thinking is what also helps institutions here is, is with these NASDAQ names, whoops, extended now to the downside. And these things are way extended. They might pop in here, and that provides some cover in terms of muting any sell-off and not making it look so bad. Because right now the media is trumpeting the line that you want to get into this market and you want to use the pullbacks to buy in and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, here's, uh, let me show you some names I've been shorting and see if they, I think we talked about this last week. Uh, it's right in here. I mean, it's shortable at the 50-day line after earnings and it's just continued lower. Now you're at the 200-day line, good for a bounce. So we'll see where this goes and whether it sets up again. Uh, Electronic Arts is another late stage failed base. It was shortable on Tuesday of this week and I actually did short that one. Got a nice move. You got the undercut here. Actually bailed out yesterday and of course it goes a little further down today and that's turning back to the upside. Maybe it becomes shortable again. So uh, I want to look at somebody's talking about uh, SLW. Oh my that's ugly. I guess, you know, that's a tricky play. That's you're, It's really just, uh, I mean, what's your thought on that, Dr. K, taking the contrarian side of the precious metals? Um, yeah, well, as we say, you know, when they look as ugly as they can, that's where you kind of step in. Um, but well, you don't know uh, if they're going to turn. Would, you know, they, who knows? Maybe that's the problem. It, you know, catching these falling knives uh, is, is the issue. The, the and, other thing, though, is that if the market gets into, into a bad sell-off, now you're going to start getting margin calls, you're going to get liquidity issues, and people are going to have to raise cash, so they're going to start selling every asset on the freaking planet, and that includes gold, so you're not guaranteed a rally. Just we saw that in 2008. If, yeah. If, uh, yeah, gets to that extreme. What what we mean, really mean by buying when these things look as ugly as they can is not now. In fact, never buy anything that looks like this. But let's say... Oh, come on, catch weeks. a falling knife. <laughs> Um, that's it's like a vibrating uh, multi-dimensional one, but in the coming weeks, if it let's say it just kind of finds its floor, like it has, you know, um, a, a number of times in the past uh, when it looks kind of ugly, um, you know, and it kind of just gets quiet in volume and and it you know narrows in the price range and everything, then you can buy on a very low volume day, um, you know, when it's when it's not doing much of anything, and it's done that a number of times. You know, you can see that in May, you can see that in uh, April, uh, prior to the uh, the beginning of the uptrend, which started in January, what are we uh, you know, there were there were other periods uh, like you know GLD. It, you had a number of these periods where um, got pretty ugly, so prior to yeah. January, you know, it looked. I mean, it looked as ugly as it could be in December. Uh, but again, you're not buying when it's coming straight off. You're buying it when it's getting quiet. Um, yeah, they, and, you notice they come off hard, and then they it kind of slows down for a few days. So in the face of this, there's no real slowdown yet. So. And I, I June, think, like June, June was a great time actually, um, where the volume got. I think it was the smallest volume on the second uh, of June, and uh, it was quiet for about four days after coming off pretty right hard. Here, yeah. And then the next day, the next day it gaps higher, you know, and it's off to the races again. Uh, and, it, and that's not an isolated case example. That there, I've, I've studied yeah, right here. you know the properties yeah, of it. Yes. Yeah. And it, 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 uh, it, there are setups, you know, that can emerge like like this before the big uh, move higher. Um, and, and, you know, it's not to say you go in whole hog on a position because it could stay 
dormant for a while or could even move lower. You know, so you just go in with a nominal position and you know, in that, at that juncture, I think, where your odds are somewhat in your favor. Yeah. The only thing I would caution is that if the general market, the stock, stocks are selling off, you know, my fear has been that with the, with the sell-off in bonds, for example, whoops, this is bad. And, and today the bond markets are closed, so, you know, anybody who owns bonds has a reprieve today. But it's probably all going to start up again on Friday. But if they're unloading bonds, does the money necessarily go into uh, stocks? Or, or do you have to raise liquidity levels because you're starting to see the uh, nominal value of your holdings decline? I mean, look at the breakdown in these. So you had this big, powerful move back in July, and it's just the muni bonds have been continuing lower. I think... Uh, TLT did the same thing. So if you get all these asset classes selling off in unison, you're going to create liquidity crises or need to raise liquidity by institutions, and then you're going to get forced selling. So that's going to take down gold as well as uh, other commodities and other asset classes, including bonds and, and uh, of course, stocks, which would be leading the charge. So, so the trick here is whether the stock market starts to get into some serious trouble here. And I think there's some rumblings of uh, trouble here that I don't like. And I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody they need to be long this market. Uh, at best, I think you, if you haven't already been forced into cash. So, for example, the names left on our focus list, NVIDIA, you probably could have stayed there. That didn't look so hot yesterday, but you probably could have stayed there using the 50-day line as your ultimate selling guide, for those of you who like to give something more room. And then uh, what are the other ones that Facebook's, uh, that was taken off. What are the other ones that have hung in there? Uh, EDU is another one we have on the list. EDU, okay, let me check. G -I -I yeah, there's GIMO, GIMO, and then uh, Netflix. There's there's only really five names because the other yeah, two, okay, Momo Netflix, and NetEase. No, Netflix is I think is probably top. And we talked about this I believe over the weekend. We were in yeah. the, where we reviewed these names. That if this this looks like this on the weekly chart, you guys see that? Here, get a nice little little bounce off the lows. Uh, you know, I think they're going to work this. So you're just going to see it bouncing along all day long, and then see if they cut it loose at the end of the day, which I think is a possibility. Then we got Chemo here's, on here's the list. Netflix. Uh, this is kind of pod-like. It's like a flat bottom pod, a punch bowl of death. And the, the essential problem here is you have this one week massive move that goes up. How many percent is that, Doctor K? Like thirty? Yeah, thirty percent or forty? Yeah, thirty. Yeah, so you that, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. So I think if you bought the, the Bible Gap up, which, I, you know, I bought that, and it was good for a trade, and then the thing breaks the 20-day line. Now, we, we've talked about this many times before. The first sign of a late stage or pod failure is going to be the break of the 20-day line. So you have that now. So if you see any rally up to 118.84 on Netflix, that might just be a short sale point. So... Yeah, not, not only that, I point out that with uh, this gap higher on earnings, um, you know, if, if you had bought it on that basis, um, then at the very latest, you would sell on an undercut of that low with no, with, with no um, cushion or anything. You right. don't give it one, one or two percent because I, I it's trading. I right? would take the 10 percent profit and say thank you uh, and move along yeah, quietly. Exactly. <laughs> In this kind of market, you got to take take your profits when you've got them in Take context. Them when you got them, man. You don't, you, you know. So that, now, so you get a little bounce off the lows. Dow's down 44, and Essex down 11. So that seems normal. I think they're working it. So it's going to be kind of choppy in here. But here's a question for you, Dr. K. Volatility model is on a sell. Believing markets will continue up from here. What are your comments? Well, keep in mind that everything we do is on the basis of day to day. We're not predicting something that doesn't exist, meaning the future. So it's impossible to say, oh, yeah, we're now in an uptrend. No, um, what, it, what it senses is a favorable entry opportunity, which may last as short as you know a few hours. It might only last a day. Um, but these yeah. instruments can move pretty wildly. So when the markets get more volatile, sometimes you can end up with you know several percent profit in a matter of, well, we've seen this. Uh, sometimes you end up with a, with a double-digit profit in a matter of hours, um, especially on a buy signal. Uh, I should so, probably disclose because you, you're saying we, but it, it's really the, no. I'm saying we I, in I'm terms of how we long, see I'm how long, we see the market. I'm long the UVXY from yesterday and the day before. I bought a little bit at 1325, and then yesterday it came down a little more, like 1261 or 1262. I bought. I really loaded into the thing, and then it turned back to the upside. And so I've got. 
I mean, for, for me, I don't know if you call it a big position. It's about, what is it? Let me calc this out, about 15%. So I've got a 15% long position in the UVXY. So, and that's working for me. So that's where I'm at. So, <laughs> you know, and actually, I want to so, make a comment. Know, I think everyone, great minds don't think alike. Everyone, well, it's markets are fractal, as we know. So, um, time frames are essential when it comes to trading. And as I pointed out, I think <laughs> some of the members uh, sitting in today may remember um, that there is. I, I do have a very short-term oriented. It's more of a day trading model that is not realistic for um, internet, uh, you know, for sending out emails and such, because you got to be right there on the trigger, right when you get the signal. You can't delay a second, or you can't really delay five, five or ten seconds, otherwise it could, it could in introduce too much slippage. But when I've used that model in my own trading, it's successful. It does work over time, over, you know, period, you, you, you end up doing, you know, maybe a handful of trades a day, and over a period of a month, then two months, three months, four months, you know, I did it over six months, one period, and then I did it again, and both periods were quite profitable. The problem is it drives me nuts. It's not the way I'm, it's not my trading personality. It, it ends up exhausting me because it's, it's, it's like I'm going against the grain of my trading personality. And we always talk about that, you know, if you set up a system, a strategy that works for you, you know, because you don't want to end each day feeling, you know, drained. Um, you know, and markets for me are a source of, uh, of energy, you know, and even, even if I'm losing money, it doesn't matter, you know, it, it just it, as long as I'm trading in alignment with my personality, then um, I feel uh, energized by the end of the day. Um, and, the, and money doesn't have, doesn't really figure into it. It has to do with did I trade properly, did I trade right, did I, you know, obey, uh, you know, my, my own personal uh, rules. And I think every, every trader should ask themselves that and, you know, ask also, you know, we said, Keep a diary, keep a journal, and record these feelings, you know, because if you're not feeling right, it's your gut saying something and pay attention to it. Sometimes it might be, you know, your gut saying, uh, and, and maybe in the form of a dream. Like I remember, in, um, we always like to go back to this because it's a turning point for the markets, but October of 1999. Uh, by then, so many people were throwing in the towel. I know I had my biggest drawdown of my trading career. and. It what and Bill O'Neill remarked, you know, um, over the phone to me. He was just like, "I just, you know, this market. I think it's done." You know, I, he he was he was pretty much fed up. And lo and behold, it was I think two or three, four days later. You know, I no, I noticed over those days, you had Amazon, Yahoo, you had a number of key names that 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 turned around and just took right off. Um, so it's something in my gut, though, when when Bill was saying that. It didn't dishearten me. That's what I mean. It, I had a dream that wait, something's going on. Uh, something's positive. All this churning and burning, and you know that people had some basically April till October. It was brutal, and you can see that in the in the chart of the Nasdaq. It's, it's the choppiest, go nowhere period in I think Nasdaq history. So naturally, these big drawdowns made sense in people's accounts. But uh, you know, pay attention to your gut with everything. Um, and the, the more refined and the, the the more in alignment you become in tr in the ways of your trade, uh, the more reliable you. Uh, your gut will become. I think uh, you know the, trading with your personality in, in this market. It helps to be uh, schizophrenic, uh, multi person. Yeah, have what, what do they call it? What did that? What was that book? Sybil, I remember. Uh, yeah, was, uh, uh, multi uh, personality or whatever. Thirteen, so. thirteen personalities. <laughs> But anyways, but you know, so I've got a buck and maybe a buck and a half or more on this UVX, so I will see what happens. Um, that's what it looks like on a 620, but I don't really use the 620 to trade it. I'm mostly watching what the market's doing. So, um, and I think the market looks like it's going to start to roll over, then I'll go long the thing. And that's what I did yesterday. So, um, anyway, so let me say, I really re appreciate both of your comments on trading today. You're welcome. We may have to start charging extra for it, I guess. Um, but, uh, but you know, so, and I've got my out point. At this point, I'm, I'm definitely getting out of this position with a profit no matter what happens. But I think if I let it play out based on my theory for now, I know, I know it would negate it. And I'm not seeing it. So, I mean, do you see anything you want to buy here, Dr. K? I mean, other than, of course, this which I don't like, this, uh, what is it, ATG or AT? If, if, AG, if AGX, AGX were to construct... Yeah, if it were to constructively pull back into a, to a place where my risk was really low, because I want to keep risk, when it comes to stocks, I'm going to always keep my risk low, you know, say beyond, you know, below 4%. Um, then I might take a, 
then I might take a position, but it's pretty far up right now, um, and it's you know you don't want to be buying anything that where you know your risk is going to be five, six, seven percent from your buy point. No, not not in this market because it, the, again well, the risk reward in this environment is really really narrow. That your profits are narrow, therefore your risk has to be that much narrower. So if you normally give give a stock say four percent or five percent, this is the kind of market where you might want to only give it two percent or three percent. Any questions on any stocks? Someone's asking about Square. I'm not going to buy Square. I mean, I like, the action is interesting, but again, it's the same story. They came out with earnings. They had a pocket pivot. It runs up to the top of the range, and boom, you're back down into the 50-day line. So if you really like it, I guess you could try and buy it here and see what happens. So, but, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, this is what it looks like on a weekly chart. Eh, maybe it's trying to set up. Maybe it's some. It's a hot name. Maybe it'll lead the market higher. Um I mean, I have been watching some of these because they're just so far down there. If you look at you know, Twilio, did anybody ever think it was going to get this low? It's, this thing's been cut, what, in, um, what's the percent dive off the peak? Two-thirds. Like, Two-thirds, two -thirds, I think. Five percent or so. So there you go. Uh, and that's all you get in this market. You know, you get a, that, and that's a great move. If you played any part of it, even if you just played like from 52 up to 70, that's a pretty nice pop to play. Uh, and it was very playable. I mean, we, I played it. It's one of the reasons I'm up this year. Um, but you have that, and you have Acacia came out with earnings yesterday, and they don't know what they want to do. Do I want to rally? Do I want to sell off? But that could come down a lot further. So the assumption that somehow this is magical and it's going to continue going higher forever is not really true. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's a lot of been, people. Both of these have been pretty much cut, cut in half. Cut in half. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same for the Twilio. Not two thirds, but it's it's all it's, it's cut, close. cut more than more than in half. Close to. Yeah. Years. So. Um, what about? Yeah. The, it's just, these are waterfall stocks. You know, they were the winners, and now you know they go. This is unusual, but they're going straight up, then it goes straight down. Here goes uh, and, line. Looks like garbage too. Look at that. I mean, and if you catch it, but what what's what I find so interesting is you know how I've, I've talked about this Cinderella principle that you know how long is Cinderella going to stay at the ball, or how many times is she going to show up at the ball? You know, two or three times. Uh, maybe, uh, but you know, I'm always amazed at how at the peak, you know, Acacia, like we were talking about this earlier, someone I know is like putting together precedence analysis for Acacia, writing when it was up in here along with Twilio, when it was right up in here and coming up with precedence, showing that these stocks are going to have these great moves. And to me, I'm thinking to myself, well, that, that pretty much is it. Cinderella's leaving the ball now, and that, that was pretty much it. And uh, people don't really get that concept in this market, is that, that things have a move, and you have to take it. And you may not catch it all, but if you can consistently catch some decent moves, and you don't have to do it in huge size, you can work your way higher uh, and keep risk to a minimum because this market is nuts. Uh, two pocket pivots in a row for XON. Well, this is just... This is a piece of garbage so far. So, and this is just bouncing with the whole biotech space. So, is it going to continue going higher? Who knows? I'm not going to buy it here. I certainly wouldn't buy it here. If I was going to try and buy it, maybe I don't know if this undercuts, but you know, now now it's kind of obvious. So, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if they blew this thing up along with the rest of the biotechs. And if you look at like Biogen. That's what Biogen looks like. So there's a big move. Are you going to buy that? I guess if you really want to, you can. Because it's a wonderful world now. And, the, and there's uh, Celgene. You know, that's up at the top. So that looks suspicious. Um, what are the other ones? I think Gilead. That didn't go anywhere. Amgen tried to go somewhere. So the market's just futzing around. They're, I think they're just dangling it here and see if I'm correct by the end of the day if they don't take it down. If they if they take it up, then I don't know what to think. Uh, but all I know is, you know, it's been very profitable on the short side for a couple of days, and then we'll figure out what happens from there. How about shorting BABA? Well, you're a little bit late on that, first of all, because this is a spot to short it when it reversed at the 50-day line right after earnings. So if you understand how to do it, it was right there in your face, and now you're going to short it here. Uh, you You have to be a newbie. Because that would probably be one of the dumbest things you could do. Because number one, you're undercutting this low. You're coming close to this uh, Bible gap up. It's already down from here down here. You're down more than 10%. So I, I would think if you had a rally up to the 20-day line, 99.66, maybe that would be a good spot to hit it short. But for now, I wouldn't really. 
I'd be looking to get short the stock now. That's that's kind of late. Of course, you can wait for a rally and see what happens. So, uh, let's see. S and P's down now. Aren't oil stocks getting whacked today? Isn't that what's dragging the? Uh, yeah, they're off. Like I was looking, I, I'm actually looking at uh, yeah, EOG is one, but like Apache almost looks shortable uh, on the rally here. Uh, that was one I was looking at. It's starting to fail on a breakout. I don't know. It's under the 50-day and the 20-day, so it runs into the 20-day. I, I don't know what kind of mileage you get out of this. Personally, I think if the market busts wide open, my, what, this is my favorite play because uh, you get a lot of upside leverage. I actually did really well with this from here to here. It actually got out at like 1860, and then, of course, it goes another couple of bucks higher. But that's fine because it was a good move to catch, and now it comes all the way down here, undercuts the slow, and now I'm back on it uh, on the long side and this what I like about this is the I think the compression works in your favor so in other words if for whatever size position you have it, it does, if it's coming down it'll come down slower then it will go up of course that's not but it, that's not true after it has a move up but as it's coming down coming down and you start to get into lows it, it tends to slow down at least based on what I've seen and then then you can get in there and your downside isn't all that big but your upside in terms of the when it decompresses and just jacks higher it becomes free. So if the market breaks down, that's probably going to do pretty well. Um, yeah, and then, and of course the logic inherent logic behind that is uh, that markets take the trapdoor down, but the stairs up. So you know when you see UVXY spiking um, and the the VIX uh, strategy, VIX volatility strategy, obviously is watching for that and explains a number of these very fast, you know, 15% or greater gains in a matter of hours or maybe a day or two. Uh, that's because, you know, the VIX is spiking and so is UVXY and VXX and, and so on. Um, and that happens very quickly because uh, markets don't just stair step lower generally, not, not these days. Um, you know, meanwhile, you know, when we get another uptrend and it just sits on its signal and we're going to see UVXY kind of go into its normal mode of going lower, you know, in a more gentle manner. I personally would like to see it get to 300 again. That would be really nice. That occurred in February of this year. Can it can it logically get there from here or has it split too many times? I don't It's split too many times. It would it would have to what it's going to do is a reverse split like it always does. So it could get to 300 on the <laughs> reverse split basis. But that said, um, when it when it does spike, yeah, I mean it nice. can spike 50 to 100% or more. Um, you know, on a serious uh, VIX spike. And uh, so, that, in other words, it's at 14 now. If the markets were really to come apart, um, not, not that they will, but, you know, let's say that happened, uh, you know, 14 could be looking at 28, 30, 35. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm playing for. So a small position, you know, uh, doesn't really set me back too much. Uh, so so a 10% position, for example, if it drops 10%, I'm going to get hit, hit for... Uh, 1%. If it drops 50%, I'm going to get hit for 5 But if it rallies 100 then I'm going to catch 10 20 That's That's kind of my thinking here. So, And I've been studying this UVXY, Dr. K, just because I'm trying to get a handle on what the hell your model is doing. So I can try to get some other idea of how this nutball vehicle drives. <laughs> It is. It is really something. Out of everything in my trading career, this is this stands alone um, in many regards. Yeah, and I, I, it I also it. poses. It's Dr. K's obsession. This is his obsession. It's my white whale. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, um, you know, it's gone through a lot of evolutions, and it, it's it's. I'm I'm in a way grateful that the market has been as challenging as it has been. Um, you know, I can't. You know, you and I both have talked about this. It's, you know, the 80s and 90s looked like walks in the park, and then even, you know, 2003, even compressed 2005 and six Here we were go. simple. Here we go. You know, but but the the QE factor and the manipulations are extreme. They are at all all extremes. So, but I like that because it it toughens it toughens us, but it also toughens the model. Right. So once you know, I think Druckenmiller was saying, you know, the the interest rates have been pushed down like a beach ball, and I feel like. That's true with the way the markets, the price volume action of, of markets have been year after year. It, it's the beach ball gets pushed lower and lower, and at some point something's got to give because nothing ever, you know, you don't get to the point where you just, okay, you've painted, the, we've, we've cornered the market, we painted it into a corner, and everything's done. I, I don't anticipate that happening because I suppose that presumes uh, that the whole world will no longer have electricity or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to short NVIDIA. I'm watching it right now on the 620, so you can see how the lines have all caught up. Uh, you know, they're, they're back close to each other here as they're flattening out, so maybe you get a, a sell signal here. I'm watching for that. So 
Um, UVXY now fourteen ninety one. Is that high for the day? I don't know. Um, so that's something to watch for. I mean, the news is so good. I remember what happened to Momo the other day. Oh my God, that was brutal. Uh, they came out with an awesome earnings report. Everything was beautiful, but it reversed and they sold it. And that, to me, that it was sort of like, okay, why is that happening? And it's a Chinese name, and you got to wonder if people are are raising cash somewhere, and they're sell, selling into that out of China. I don't know. That's just a thought. So maybe any of you guys, uh, any any of you guys know anything about that? Let me know. Some of you guys can. Uh, it's my understanding that one cannot short UVXY. Um, I do you know why I I don't know I I know it depends, it's, it depends it's on your broker for, for me it depends on your broker and and uh, it depend it also depends on the day sometimes they'll have shares available sometimes not also you might look into T T Vix as an alternative but yeah they are generally pretty hard to short and if you do get the short they come at a, a fairly high high percentage uh, annualized although that's quite small still by comparison but just keep that in mind it's a function of your broker the day you're doing it. Um, and the vehicle. Yeah, and, and so, there's well, more than somebody else. There's says, VXX. Why? You could short. You could short VXX. I think more easily because why not uh, that's just buy this? That, what is that one? S is it SVX? Why not just buy that? X, yeah, SVXY. You could just buy you that just or XIV. Like I said, I wouldn't be shorting the VIX here. I'd be long the VIX, and I am. So my money is where my big mouth is. We're down 66. Um, anyways, um, let me know when you guys don't want to go. Uh, long the VIX, I'll sell it to you. Um, let's see, talking about some big stocks, uh, here's where the best shorts have been. I mean, you look at these things, Cisco it looks like it may be on the verge of rolling, you know, it's up here. I like that as a short. Um, Intel's another piece of garbage, that's too far down, but it looks like it may want to head lower, and it can because it's been lower uh, earlier this year, so it could head down to 28. 20 day line is your uh, area of overhead resistance. Apple, I think, is a short on any rallies up to the 110, 111.99 level. So that's a 2% range up there between the 10-day and the 20-day. And I think the stock is probably going down. As we've said many times, there's no there's no impetus for this thing in terms of uh, killer apps. So let's go and look at Qualcomm. Now, Qualcomm is a name that I've actually played long and short, depending on where it is. But, you know, this like I said, has had a big move. It's somewhat pod-like. You know, there's a big punch bowl sort of formation. So it's had a big move. It's been somewhat rapid, so it could bust. And so far, it seems to be finding resistance at the 20-day uh, line. So it's uh, that seems to be a short point. I was hitting it earlier in the week along the 10-day line, and it breaks, and I buy it down here along the 66 level, and it rallies, and then it's just a big shortable huggable stuffed shorting toy I guess uh, and, and uh, yesterday and it tested this low and so now it's back above the 50 day but if it busts a 50 day then this could become a late stage failure and the way they're going after all of these techs makes me think that that's a possibility they may pause here for a little bit and then kaboom it's the gooey kablooey you know um, so Microsoft let's take a look at that I mean, the, the alternative here to shorting these names is to just go on long the what is it the SQQQ or something so uh, that's the that's the sh uh, 3x uh, Nasdaq 100 short. Yeah. Okay. So the TQQQ is the opposite. That's that's the long. Uh, I want to check something here. Let's... Yeah. IWM continuing higher. My theory on this is to buy the TWM. So I just bought a little position here on it um, and see if that rolls in. Because this, to me, looks phony. Um, okay, so where was I? Uh, S-Bucks, Starbucks. Hanging along a 50-day. That looks like a short using the 50-day as a stop. So possibility there. Um, Netflix, that was a short yesterday as it broke the 20-day line at 118.82. So if you hit it there on the short side, certainly if I was long a thing, I'd have been out of it already, like I said. But now if you rally back up to the 20-day line, that could be a uh, nice short sale point. So um, let's see.
Baidu has been another one. I mean, if, you, if you're watching these things, this could have been shorted back here, and then it, rally, it breaks the 200-day and up to the 200-day, and it could have been shorted there, and it's been coming lower. Um, I think they're going to, let's see if this happens. I just get this feeling that they're going to cut this thing loose right now. You're going to see it's down 100 or something. I don't know. But, but it's so squirrely, and, and I wonder how much of this is just simple manip manip manipulation. Simple manipulation. Say that 20 times fast. Um, Tesla. Yeah, actually, uh, on, on you know, if you look at the Nasdaq uh, composite, and you just look at the the, the intraday ranges of the last uh, three days, have been quite wide, and uh, for that to just suddenly calm down is weird. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you know, we're gonna like, like we're gonna see some more noise. There's gonna be a bit more noise, and then maybe some direction will be established. But that might take a couple days. Yeah, so I'm anticipating uh, this will be the direction. So that's kind of the side I'm playing on right now, and I have been. So, you know, the markets, the way I look at it, how do I know I'm right is uh, based on what, what kind of money am I making. So if I'm making money, I know I'm right. I mean, everything else is just conversation. So um, anyways, you mentioned now in your blog, any additional, well, now is one of those on-the-fence type of names. You know, it could be, the one problem with this thing is that it's it's got this big V-shape rolling. I'm sorry. Yeah, I went to the wrong chart. Let's go back here. Here we go. It's got this this sort of uh, V-shaped sort of pod. So it could fail here very easily. And so it, what what's happening now is it is failing. Okay, it's broken the 20-day line, and I'm thinking if this can hold here and the market can go higher, okay, then this might be a, a viable long candidate. But the market context changed big time yesterday, and this thing reversed. And you know, it was up like two, three bucks earlier in the day, and I'm thinking, wow, this looks pretty good. But it's back up to the highs, so to me, it's a trade. And then once it, they start hitting the text, this thing reverses, and on the 620, you could see it very quickly uh, just turn off of the highs at 85.50. And so at that point, it was a short, in my view. So I take a, a two-sided view of a lot of these stocks. You know, as has been the case with Qualcomm, as has been the case with Netflix and other names. So uh, Priceline, let's see here. You know, that may fail on this. I don't know. But it's, it's just very screwy. So anyways, uh, Amazon, you know, that was a short uh, up here if you got on it on the gap or at the 10-day line. But the place to hit it was right here at the 50-day line. Um, so if you're long now, you shouldn't be long it. I mean, you should. this is telling you to get the hell out. And I would say the reversal yesterday should have told you to get the hell out and go short. And that's exactly what I will do. And I'll be, I may be long a thing, and then I'll see it reverse. I'll flip out and sell it and then go short. And I'll do that with anything that I'm playing on the long side. I have no issue with that. Um, let's see. Also, high, high volume um, outside reversals like in yeah, the case of now okay. are very bearish patterns. Right. So, you know, and I... I uh, I think I've talked about this one before, but, you know, and I think that's the same thing with something like a workday looks like trouble now. Salesforce looks like trouble. Um, So I'm, you know, it's still early in the day, but I think you're going to see something nasty at the end of the day. Something nastier than a 10-year-old Donald Trump audio tape. Um, anyways, that, uh, Google is the last one here, and that was shortable yesterday at the 50-day line, and it's busted. And so now all these are busted, and looks like trouble to me. Trouble in paradise. Um, anyways. That's kind of what I'd be looking at on some of these, you know, looking for shorts that way. Otherwise, if you think anything that's rallied up as a result of the uh, awesome Trump policies that are going to save the world, uh, then I guess you could try and buy some of those on pullbacks, uh, or you could maybe short into the moves. I don't know. But but you can see that these big stock NASDAQ names are have all morphed into late-stage short sale situations. Like now is right in position, I think... What was another one that we thought was right in position? Was it Microsoft? Could be in position to be shorted. Um, 
So any last questions is basically all I've got. So you're kind of getting a mixed message from us, but uh, like I said, great minds don't always think alike exactly. So I'm thinking that this market is probably headed lower from here. That's what it looks like. Dr. K, any final and comments? And, and I'm thinking that uh, there's, I don't have enough information to be definitive in either direction, but uh, of course, new information will come um, as soon as now. <laughs> so uh, just remain they, fluid, yeah, they as we always advise. Fun. Yeah, today might be a critical day. So anyways, that's, uh, we're like Fox News, we're fair and balanced, or, or, or unfair and unbalanced, I don't know, whatever it is, maybe like this market. Um, I hope we're not like Fox News. <laughs> hey, I've been on Fox News before, don't don't, don't put them down, but any, in any case. Um, yeah, and no longer. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah, I don't need to waste my time on it. I want to make money on the short. Uh, I'm not. I mean, in the markets, so trading. I make more money trading than going on Fox News. Believe it, as our new president might say. Anyway, that's all we got. We'll see where this thing heads uh, ends the day. But uh, so far, looking like we're having a lot of uh, volatility and a lot of weird cross currents that could eventually cause some problems for the market. But you know, we'll, we'll just see. So I'm thinking if we see the market bust into the close. Uh, reverse and break down, that might be a very bad sign. That's something I'm watching for. Meanwhile, I'm just, you know, working my shorts and making money here and there, and I'll just continue doing that until I start seeing something that looks better. So, in any case, thanks for showing up, you guys. We'll catch you next week. Have a great uh, weekend, and good luck trading. So long, everyone.